Hi, this is Don Nelson, editor of the Additive Report and host of the Additive Reporter video series. Today we are launching a series of occasional interviews with the founders of new companies in the 3D printing space. If you're like me, you might wonder who would start a new company during a global pandemic? Well, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, a lot of people. New business formation applications were up nearly 42% in 2020 compared to 2019. One of those companies is Freeform Technologies, a three-month-old St. Mary's, Pennsylvania 3D Print and Service Bureau. Today I'm going to talk with Freeform VP of Business Development, Chris Aiello. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Don. You know, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Businesses are suffering. People are hanging on by their fingertips. Um, why is this a good time to start a 3D printing service bureau? Yeah, you're not the, you're not the first person to ask that question when people ask me what I'm <laughs> Um, it was, it's kind of just, it was kind of the perfect storm for us. Um, two of our co-founders were ready to start, you know, start a business, uh, around metal additive. Um, Eric has been in the additive space for a long time on the equipment and the software side more so. Um, and then Andy is an electrical engineer. He does a ton of high, you know, um, high value add automation. He's always using additive tools for end of arm tooling or fixtures. Um, and they were ready to push that forward to metal. Uh, Nate and I have a metal background and the, you know, being starting in the pandemic was, it was a little tricky when you try to tell somebody, you're going to tell your wife you're quitting your job in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, was, it was good for us from a customer perspective or, you know, a prospect perspective because we were able to slow down a little bit. People weren't really ready to spend money on, you know, parts. Um, so being able to slow down and get our business set up the way we wanted to get our equipment laid out the way we wanted to, it was a good time because the whole world kind of was at a standstill and we were able to drive freeform forward to be ready for 2021 as we, you know, as we, the vaccine rolls out and as we get ready for the, you know, the future of the future of manufacturing. All right. Well, what does freeform tech offer that's not already out there? Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the service bureaus for metal out there are DMLS or, you know, laser centering side. Um, binder net is, you know, our, our biggest competition, frankly, is, is our equipment suppliers additive center at X1. Um, and that, you know, talking to X1, you know, one of the reasons they have that additive center is because nobody else was willing to be a parts maker. Okay. All right. I'm going to test your powers of description. Can you briefly explain for, for those of our viewers who are not familiar with binder jetting, how, how it works and how it's different from other types of metal 3d printing? Yeah, so I think the simplest way to explain it is it's an inkjet technology. Uh, and the way that I try to explain it to people in, you know, in the simplest terms is metal powder is now your paper and your ink is binder. So every time, every time your roller or your ultrasonics, you know, moves across that bed, it would be just like your printer moving paper underneath your printhead. Um, and now we're, you know, we're inkjetting binder in the, in the shape of our part and building in the Z direction. Uh, the free powder in the bed supports other parts, so you have very little support structure like you do in the other metal tech technologies. Just a few moments ago, you had mentioned X1. Now, you, you took delivery of an X1 oh, last year, and I think you just took delivery of a, of a desktop machine. Is that correct? We did, yeah. We, we took delivery of a, an X1 Indevent Plus in uh, late, late November, early December, uh, and then we just installed at the very first of the year Desktop Metal's new P1 production system which uses their single pass jetting technology with a smaller build envelope. Okay. Now are those your first uh, binder jetting uh, machines? Yep. Those are our first two pieces of equipment. You know, based on your experience, uh, when you're talking to someone that is interested in, in getting a 3d printed part and you're talking about design, uh, is it a different conversation than, than you would have with someone that's interested in talking about design of a, of a machined part or a stamped part, you know, in, in that 3D printing is relatively new compared to milling, let's say, which has been around for 125 years or whatever. So how is that different when you're talking design? Yeah, and that's really where our name comes from. It's, you know, free form. Um, you're getting the freedom of design to form your products. Uh, everybody thinks in conventional ways, you know, how do we press this part? How do we injection mold this part? How do we mill this part? Um, and all those pieces of equipment um, you can be creative with. You have fifth access, you have slides, you know, yeah, there's other features you can do, but we're trying to, you know, get that out of everybody's mind is what is the part that you want and how do you want it to look? And then let's back in, let's back into a process from there. Um, Cause additive isn't limitless either. 
Um, but, you know, there are, you know, there are some limits to what we can print, um, but you get a lot more freedom from metal additive than you do from any other conventional manufacturing technique. Well, one of the things I would like to do is, uh, you know, share with our viewers is part of your mission statement, uh, your vision statement, I, I should say. It, it includes these words. Engineering and design have been boxed in by traditional manufacturing constraints, machining capabilities, but status quo thinking as well. 3D printing has the potential to change all that, but only if we embrace new paradigms and start asking what else is possible. So I would ask you, what is possible with 3D printing that we wouldn't be getting with conventional types of manufacturing processes? I think the big thing we're seeing is with the miniaturization and the lightweighting of a lot of the products that we're seeing in the market, everybody's trying to condense your conventional, you know, gearbox, your conventional drivetrain into a smaller footprint. Um, and, you know, now with the assembly consolidation, part consolidation, generative design capabilities of additive, you're able to, um, you're able to take that miniaturization and lightweighting, and you're able to accomplish that with these new techniques with metal additive and plastic additive. Um, I think it's just, that's the, that's the biggest thing that's, you know, shifting. People are able to think outside of the box instead of thinking, you know, what is the tool path of this or what, you know, what is the injection mold going to look like for this? Um, you're able to take that footprint that you're trying to work in. And you're now able to build the components around that. <laughs> How long have you been involved with additive manufacturing? My first exposure to additive was uh, in 2015, 2014. Uh, I worked for, I worked for our group worldwide. Uh, we owned 3d material technologies, which is now part of Aerojet Rocketdyne um, all on the DMLS SLS side. So I got I got exposed to a, to to additive there. Okay, so you've got maybe five years in. Yep. With the technology. Yeah. Okay. And in those five years, what 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 is the 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 the, the biggest shortcoming, or what area of additive needs the most work in in order for it to take that step forward and become a popular accepted process within the manufacturing community is it equipment or software yeah so I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay in my lane here and talk metal binder jet i think the two big things with metal binder jet for me are materials and surface finish um you know and in freeform we're pushing the materials under that um, but i think the equipment the oem manufacturers on the surface finish and print quality is really where we're going to start to shine um, I'm a big believer in MIM and I think you get great parts out of MIM. You, you know, you get beautiful surface finish. You can coat them with almost anything. Um, but you're talking, you know, a couple, you know, an order of magnitude difference when you get to, to binder jet. So that's going to push a little, some people away. There are post-processing equipment out there and post-processes out there where you can refine that, but it all costs money where if you just spend the money on tooling for MIM, you get that surface finish up front. So I think, you know, I think surface finish and material availability is the two biggest things that are going to help us get mass adoption. Okay. Well, I, I hope it happens. And I hope that it happens for Freeform Technology. Uh, it's been great talking to you. And, you know, we'll, we'll be checking in, see how you guys are progressing. Thanks okay. for your time. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you having us. Uh, look forward to talking in the future and, you know, keeping up on how we, how we progress.